Hello all, I am here with the great Prasanna, uh, uh, absolute honor to be here with him, a classmate from 30 years ago and uh, come to know him a little better in the last uh, few years, a distinguished alumnus designate of IIT Madras and a musician uh, of many stripes, many different genres, uh, a, a performer in many different uh, reputed festivals, but more importantly, a great human being. Thank you for uh, this chat, Prasna. You know, thank you, Maya. It's always great to see you. Thank you. It's a delight. So the world is being taken over by this idea of AI. I can't go to an alumnus meeting anymore without hearing the word AI. And so I know you are, you've been, you know, a creator, a creative person all your life. And you also have, you know, you know what, you've sort of dabbled in the world of technology for a while. So first tell us a little bit about the creative process. What does it look like to you? I mean, or from the inside. Like everything, the creative process is not it's not like a standalone process where things just happen from nowhere, right? We, we are all a product of what we have learned, what has happened before us. Um, if you see, we have come this far, um, standing on the steps of, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Or uh, standing on top of the, achievements of the past and then building from there. So the creative process itself, as far as, let's say, for an artist like me, for a musician like me, first of all happens from the fact that we have internalized some things. Mm -hmm. We have heard a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Where the process part of creative process comes mm -hmm. is in crystallizing that information and finding a way to present it in a new and interesting way. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. I think a, a lot of glamour has been attached to uh, the artist thinking. Uh, when you see from the outside, it looks as if we just conjure up magic from thin air and, and give it to you and that's how like you know when you see a magician or an illusionist do it that's the thing we know that it's not real yeah, <laughs> yeah. we know that there's work involved yeah we know that there's technique involved we know that there's a, a process involved hmm. right so i like the fact that you use the word creative process rather than creativity which is a more yeah open-ended thing uh, but therein lies the challenge the challenge lies in coming up with something like Ileraj always says, no? Ileraj Swaram only is there in music. It's the same yeah. notes, you just... Yeah, yeah, you just, yeah, exactly like from the Tamil song. Or you just like kind of like, you know, rehash the same thing again and again. But if we put it across like that, it uh, it does not help in anybody's understanding of the creative process mm -hmm. in, 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 in that simplistic a way. Mm -hmm. It's not just rehashing everything. Mm -hmm. uh, at the core of it, uh, yes, it's playing with the options that you have, mm. right? So in that sense, it's not different from whatever is fed to these algorithms or whatever information is fed to a computer or anything like that. Um, uh, however, the most amazing thing about the creative process is the ability to surprise yourself. Mm. And to me, that that defines whether whatever happened was creative or not, the ability to surprise yourself. So interesting, you know, the at the core of this so-called generative AI is the idea that, you know, chat GPT, as we all know, mm -hmm. you know, is if the, in a very simplistic I, I case that, know. <laughs> as you all no, know. No, I don't <laughs> either. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm totally low tech, but, but let's see where it goes. <laughs> no, but the core idea that, I, you know, a software or an algorithm has read every book in the world and digested every sentence and then given a few words, you know, three words, four words, 
it can predict the appropriate fifth word. So I, you know, I'll go back to what you said, and I think what you said, some the, the process in my mind, the, sort of the AI process to me is a very layman. Uh, you digest what has been given to you by your mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. that is the standing on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Then you produce something new. Mm -hmm. Then you pro it has to be interesting. You s you use these nice words, right? Yeah. So the new part is okay. I mean, like if if I tell you four words, fifth word that didn't occur in any of that, but is appro approximately relevant, you can do the new part. Mm. But it may not be interesting. It may not be. So it may, as new words, surprise you, right? Mm. So this AI process of just generating one word at a time sort of text, that's a, I'm giving a very simplistic view of what ChatGPT does. Mm. Do you think that can ever approach the world of music in terms of the creativity or creative process, as you said? Yes, because of what I said, all the information that's fed on to uh, these media like if it's chat GPT or whatever it is, uh, comes out in a, in a, uh, when you can process that level of data so quickly and so efficiently, it comes out in uh, uh, in very competent ways. Yeah. Right. So basically, chat GPT. I don't know much about chat GPT, but I do know that you can compose music. You can ask chat GPT to compose music. I also know that you could ask ChatGPT to compose a song like in Tyagraja style. Mm. You can feed information and it will do it for you. Um, and it would sound good and it would probably be too correct. Mm. But the third part that you said, uh, the interesting. That you said. Okay. Okay. Because and it's and a the one that I said surprised word. myself. Yeah. So if I take this discussion away from ChatGPT and everything else, like let's go to the world of artist and creativity mm -hmm. the first step for everyone to become good at what they do is competency mm -hmm. right and most people stop at that step they have iterative versions of competency okay i'm competent here okay i'm improving to this mm -hmm. i'm improving to this i'm improving to this i can play this raga this well mm -hmm. i can play this uh, pink floyd song this well mm -hmm. i can play exactly this so competency 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 right but there's another part of the whole thing that actually brings out the human element in creativity. I call that magic. Mm. When I play music, I have to make magic for myself. Mm. This is the goal for me. Wonderful. It should be magic. Mm. What does that mean? There has to be elements which should surprise myself. Mm and thereby surprise the people who are familiar with the world. Mm. I actually work towards it, mm. whatever may be the process, but I work towards it because I'm not interested in competency. Mm. I'm not interested in correctness. Mm. I'm interested in magic. Mm. And, and we know that all these advancements that have happened in technology, let's look at the 80s when all these British pop bands came with this whole synthesizer driven stuff, you know, whether it's Depeche Mode, Pet Shop Boys, whatever it is. Let's look at the 80s where Ele Raja's music was transformed from an acoustic situation to like a lot of electronic stuff. And let's fast forward much later when A.R. Rahman has pioneered so many new trends in technology and music and all that stuff. So the computers, uh, electronic equipment, stuff that's beyond a human being sitting and playing mm -hmm. like this. Uh, and moving into a human being feeding information to extract something coming out of computers and synthesizers and other media which were before that not accessible or not heard. Mm -hmm. Yes, but what has happened to those people who let that process take over the uh, creative input process? Competency is there. Mm -hmm. Technology has made everybody sound good. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, comes that one thing, I think is the interesting uh, discussion, whether it's chat GPT or Deep Blue versus uh, Kasparov, right? When computers started playing chess, sure. same thing. So there is that uh, human element that is indefinable. And to me, that's a core of the arts. Hmm. And therefore there is no conflict with the science and the advancements of technology to aid that process. Hmm. So I respect what chat GPT does. I also 
know that chat GPT may not surprise me as much as I can surprise myself. Oh, yes. So the audience that come to listen to you, go back with that element of surprise that they had not heard anywhere before. Right. So it's not like you can take a dozen Kirtanais in Sri Ragam, compose a 13th as a linear combination of these dozen. Sometimes when you even hear a top artist, you say, oh, that, oh, that, that is sounding like this Charanam in Indra Mahanubhavalu. But that may be small bits, but the overall experience is something that is done for the first time and experienced for the first time by the audience. And that is the magic part. That yeah, and also being in the moment. Hmm. Being in the moment and not being able to replicate it, to me, is fascinating. Hmm. In fact, it's the only thing that's so fascinating about art. Because other than that, it can be studied. Other than that, all the things can be worked out and look at the tier of competency structures that I talked about. And you can go on and on and on and on and on. So in short, in layman's language, there are a lot of people with great theoretical knowledge of music yeah. and who play very well, but don't sound soulful to people when they listen to. Yeah. And the reverse happens. There are people who sing two or three notes, play two or three chords, but do it so soulfully mm -hmm. that they grab people. And this is why people keep coming to listen to artists, listen to great musicians and all that, because they like to be transported to a new world that they don't uh, find themselves in all the time. Mm -hmm. As artists, it's my responsibility to transport them to that new world. Mm -hmm. Therefore, with enough preparation with which they come to the concert, they may find that world to be the same world as they otherwise go to. Mm -hmm. I have to take that take them out of that mm. and transport them into a new world. Mm. And that involves being completely uh, in the zone with the moment. And there is, I use the word surrender. So you have to surrender to the moment and do something and not be uh, bound by its consequences. So I joke to people by saying, hey, I'm not responsible for what I play, it just happens. Yeah. Right. Right. You listen to whatever comes out at the, in that moment. You have to live in the moment. You, did, you didn't like it? Well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a drink later. It's <laughs> fine, I'll make it up with you. Sure. But hey, I can't change it. Yeah. But not all of it is like that. I think fundamentally, what you're saying is very interesting. Is there a difference between fine arts, you know, let's say painting, sculpture, in that sense, mm -hmm. and performing arts? Because fine art, are here like if I make if I do a painting, you know, I have a brush stroke in the moment, mm -hmm. but the impression is there for here to stay forever. It's not a momentous thing. It's not a momentary thing. So, like for there is this version of uh, GPT called da called Dali, which purports to paint picture. Like Dali. Like Dali. <laughs> All right. They use the name, so presumably there there there's a certain expectation. So this idea of being creative on the fly, you know, it, like we talked about uh, talked about that process and how you surprise yourself with a certain uh, with a certain piece that emerged out of out of nowhere. You use the word magic, right? So I think the I'm beginning to see there is maybe a difference between performing arts and fine arts in that sense. There may be, but you actually. You actually brought a lot of things out when you said uh, about impression that's created. In fact, if you look at impressionistic uh, uh, art, right? So let's see, if you want to draw a tree, if you want to paint a tree, you can go into all detail of exactly how a tree looks and do it by default and by design and do it. Or you can throw a set of random brush strokes which may result in creating an image of a, a tree, tree mm. right? Which is somewhat is the idea of impressionistic painters. Uh, you know, there's a whole movement, right? Impressionism, pointillism, expressionist art, and all of that has the, is the same thing in music. In fact, it's very directly connected. So those people who, I mean, you can connect Monet's uh, works with uh, Debussy's music. Mm. You can connect the. Uh, uh, Kandinsky's uh, expressionist uh, uh, approach with Schoenberg's uh, music. So this is part of art and music has always been coexisted, at least in the uh, mm -hmm. Western world. 
and uh, which means that the process is very similar. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fine arts person at all. I mean, I can't paint a thing. I can't paint a tree for to save my life. That's not possible. But I mean, I paint something and it may look cool just because it's it happened. Yeah. So there is those things, you know. Uh, to come back to the whole thing, I'm. I think knowledge, understanding of the technique, uh, and the complete dedication towards learning as many devices as possible, which is called technique, mm -hmm. to express yourself is absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. But the ability to detach yourself from that and go into that next zone where you can be in the moment uh, and unlearn it for that small time and aspire to create something new uh, and go to me is the key mm -hmm. is basically to surrender to a higher cause that you can believe in and say this guides my art with this information that I have mm -hmm. to make it my own I think it's a spiritual quest that is got to correctly align itself with the pursuit of knowledge wonderful so to close uh, AI is claimed to deliver a lot of benefits to the business world, to people's lives at large. If there is one clean slate wish that you would want to write down, say, I would, I wish AI can do this for me to sort of maybe make your creative process a little easier, make your overall life a little easier. I don't know, as a musician, what is that one wish you have? I, I, in fact, that's the only way I would embrace it, is to make certain aspects of my life easier. Uh, so the first thing is like how word processors helped computers mm. or like, you know, Excel helps, you know, like large data to be whatever it is. That's the first thing to me, not to replace the creative process. I'm mm. not interested in chat GT composing a score of music mm. and like, you know, being triumphant about it. Mm. I'm not interested in that because why would I, I compose music. It's like, Hey, like, and I can't, Compete with chat GPT. I'm not interested. And you may not, in fact, like you said, it may never surprise us. I mean, the idea of surprise. No, it can, it can. But I can deliberately use the, um, the, uh, the processing power and the uh, uh, um, incredible amount of data that has gone into, it's like, let me just, it's like using a Google search engine. Exactly, and to learning. understand lots of things about music. I may have forgotten things, uh, you know, like, you know, I'm not writing orchestral music every day. I do know, and I've written for orchestra. I might forget some things, and I can go to a search engine and find it. Mm. And to me, it's always been, technology has always been an aid to um, quickly resolve certain problems. And that's about it. I am not in the debate whether uh, it can do this well, it can do that well, it can do this well. I would use it from the competency point of view mm. and give the due, just like how we were doing log tables yeah. <laughs> with GE, <laughs> and then it became calculators. Calculators not allowed, but log tables are allowed. We are Correct. not like doing this, you know. Correct. I think that's where I am. I, I, so helping, I mean, AI sort of helping you score yes. a complete orchestra while you are sort of the creative driver of that process in some sense. Yes, and, and we do that. And uh, even before AI, we have done that. Okay. I'll give you an example of Ilai Raja, ARM, and I'll give you my own example. I work on electronic medium. I do compose a lot of music which is purely electronic based and uh, where like I get some bizarre sounds here and there and the composition came out of those bizarre sounds. Mm. And on the other front, I take a pencil and paper and write an entire score when I arranged uh, the strings for uh, Lagan's theme uh, for A.R. Rahman. I wrote the whole score with a pencil and paper without playing any instrument mm. because I wanted to write it like that for that particular thing. But that's not how I do everything. Mm. There are times where I just like, you know, go, go to my thing and like go to a software and then do something and then edit some. So I think all of this can coexist and I think coexist with the world. It is glamorous for people to constantly feed this uh, notion that this can replace that, this can replace that. 
because that's like yeah. creating this unnecessary tension. Exactly. In fact, one of our alumni I heard in Boston said it very eloquently. He said, you will not be replaced with a, with, by AI. You'll be replaced with a person who knows how to use AI in, in any other job outside. So the person part remains the same. Prasnal, it's been an absolute delight chatting with you. Thank you for letting us into your home. And this is, it's a, it's a real home. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, for <laughs> someone, thank you for like asking me all these things. And like for someone who's totally like, you know, not at all that familiar with the AI world. But that means I should get more familiar. No, I think uh, you are well equipped to do it. You are, you are, you are sort of right in the middle of it. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks.